Dumisani Moyo joins us on What's Next. Dumisani is the Marketing Director for Africa at SAP. Dumisani, good to see you again. How are you doing? Good morning. Uh, how are you doing, Aki? Okay, I'm well. I'm well. I uh, hope you're well yourself. Yeah, on top of the world. Thank you for asking, man. Uh, listen, we've, we, we spoke uh, a few months ago. Uh, we've seen some very interesting things happening globally and on the continent as well. Now, you've got access to that global landscape at SAP. Now, considering that SAP does business, um, you know, across the world and, you know, you look at this digitization, this massive digitization that's taking place. I mean, I think you guys are in 150 countries, if I'm not mistaken. Many of them are emerging markets. How is Africa doing in adopting technology compared to the rest of the world? Where do we stand? Yeah, so I mean, Aki, the common misconception, I guess, is that Africa is lagging behind uh, when it comes to technology. Uh, my view in, is that in some cases, uh, Africa is actually ahead uh, compared to the developed world in using technology. Uh, as it relates to adoption in particular, if you look at uh, markets like West Africa, and you look at how they've, uh, uh, I guess, leapfrogged um, uh, certain phases in their development. Uh, maybe an example like mobile technology. Uh, it really shows you that uh, Africa is there uh, and Africa is uh, really adopting technology and using it. Um, I think the challenge then uh, becomes a question of scale. Uh, we need more companies to leverage technology. We need more companies to adopt technology specifically in the SME space. Uh, for us at Africa, uh, uh, for us at SAP rather, 80% uh, of our business is with SMEs. Uh, so SMEs are something that we are incredibly passionate about. Uh, and maybe in the context of Africa, SMEs are really the future of uh, Africa's economic development. You know, I'm so, I'm so happy that you've raised SMEs because you know, you know that small SME or the mid-market businesses in Africa, they are the, the powerhouse of the economy, right? You look at how many people they employ, you look at the, the contribution they make to any economy, and, uh, and, and certainly when you say they're the future, I, I'm really with you on that. How significant is the role of these SMEs or mid-market businesses in Africa's economic development? I mentioned the powerhouse of the economies, but, you know, th there's a lot more other aspects to these businesses, right? Yeah. So, I mean, I believe SMEs really could be the answer to uh, uh, Africa's economic development. But I think the emphasis should be on tech-enabled uh, SMEs, SMEs that are able to leverage technology really to drive innovation and to drive growth. Um, our continent needs to build and produce, you know, uh, businesses that are sustainable, businesses that can employ people and businesses that can contribute to GDP uh, in a meaningful way. And I believe technology could be the answer to that. I mean, granted, it's not the only answer I keep, but uh, it is certainly one of the most mm. accessible ones. Uh, and for us as a continent, we are accustomed to navigating challenges, right? Uh, we've had, we deal with all sorts of challenges uh, on a daily basis. And I think innovation is inherent in who we are. Uh, but now the question is, you know, how do we take that uh, a step further through uh, leveraging technology? If you look at some of the challenges that uh, SMEs in the African context deal with, uh, challenges such as access to special uh, 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 skills rather, uh, access to markets, access to raw materials, even issues around uh, managing businesses effectively. These are all mm -hmm. challenges that I guess uh, technology uh, could really assist with. Maybe let me just add one more example there. Uh, Africa is an exporter of raw materials, right? Uh, meaning we don't really realize value out of those materials, whether we take them out of the ground and we export them straight to Europe in most cases, we import those back as finished goods at higher prices, and we really don't get value out of uh, that entire process. So how do we leverage technology to build that manufacturing and that processing capacity within the continent? Wow, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's scary when you look at it like that, and it's so true, right? We take the things out of the earth, the minerals, it goes out the country, it comes back in. Uh, but I... You know, I guess that manufacturing, as you mentioned, you know, if we get that right together with technology, 
uh, it, it could make massive differences to economies. You, you touched on the SMEs and you touched on some of the challenges. What would you say are the, the real pressing issues and those real pressing challenges that SMEs face? And what role can technology play in addressing these? Yeah, so um, keeping with that manufacturing example, uh, I guess the biggest challenge is uh, access to materials or access to inputs that are important to the production process. Uh, and then maybe uh, looking at it slightly differently, uh, once you've got access to that material uh, or whatever is required in your input processes, you then need to access a market uh, to sell those products. Maybe another key input is skills. Um, and I think COVID, mm. for example, I mean, we've spoken about COVID to death in our previous conversation. We also touched on COVID. Uh, but COVID has taught us that access to skills shouldn't be something that is limited by geographic boundaries. Uh, so technology allows you to access skills um, uh, really from across the continent and from across the globe. Uh, so maybe if I go back to that manufacturing example and think about one of the biggest costs that a manufacturing business will have is uh, the raw materials that are used to produce whatever they produce. So making sure that you know you can access these materials at the right price from the right supplier and really have a a, a diverse network of suppliers is absolutely key. So solutions like, you know, uh, digital supply chain solutions, uh, 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 strategic sourcing, and those type of solutions really make it uh, easy for uh, SMEs to firstly access, you know, suppliers that are within their geographic area, within the country, within the continent and beyond. So the process of doing that really needs to be automated uh, and digitized so that you are as efficient as you possibly can and you're not spending all your valuable human resources in doing mundane tasks. Um, I mean, in the case of that manufacturing company, once you have found a supplier you want to work with, the process of raising um, uh, a requisition, raising a purchase order, you know, getting that invoice back, doing automatic matching, paying that supplier in time uh, is, is an important part of managing that value chain and making sure it's as efficient as possible. Okay. So, Dumisani, we know and we often hear about, you know, technology democratizing business and democratizing so many things. And, you know, access to the cloud is a great example because it's now become affo affordable to most businesses out there. Now, technology investments have been seen as inaccessible for many SMEs. Let's be honest, when you start talking about, you know, fancy networks and cloud infrastructure, for many SMEs, that seems inaccessible. What is SAP's stance on this one? Yeah, so, I mean, all these solutions that we're talking about, Aiki, are available on the cloud. Uh, but more importantly, they purpose built for the SME sector. Um, so if you really think about it, uh, the cloud gives SMEs access to a subscription-based way of acquiring services. In other words, you don't have these massive upfront capital investments that you have to put in. Uh, it's almost the same as taking out a cell phone contract, right? When you need more data, you increase your data. When you need less, you reduce it. So uh, having these solutions available on the cloud allows uh, SMEs to scale um, uh, scale their operation as the company grows. And maybe if things change, scale it down as well, allowing them to manage uh, finances a lot more uh, effectively. Um, and for us at SAP, cloud is front and center of our strategy. And through the cloud, we really prioritize innovation, uh, agility, uh, and really cost-effective solution. All these factors, as you say, are absolutely important to SMEs because SMEs do not have endless financial resources. So they do need to think about, you know, am I going to buy, you know, a van uh, to uh, grow my operation? Am I going to hire people? Am I going to get bigger premises? Or am I going to invest in technology? So for me, Aki, uh, investing in technology, I guess, has a lot to do with innovation. And I mean, we know that innovation is really how uh, a lot of these organizations can grow and scale. Okay, now it's, a, it's a fair point. But the other thing that SMEs face, right, for example, they, they, they've got a balance, um, you know, the, the challenge of limited resources, 
including access to capital. But I guess what you just said now, when you when you can buy what you want to use, that sorts out a lot of that particular challenge. But why mm. why should SMEs spend their limited resources on technology investments versus expanding their business operation? And I guess it, it's a fine line on what you emphasize as important in your small, medium-sized enterprise. Yeah. I mean, I, I, uh, perhaps I can share an interesting article that I read uh, recently where they spoke about, you know, since 2000, uh, 52% of uh, Fortune 500 companies have closed shop. Uh, in other words, they don't exist anymore. I mean, it's a long list of companies from BlackBerry to Blockbusters and many others. So innovation, you know, needs to be a business priority that is central to strategy. Uh, and if you're not thinking about how you're going to be innovative, you're not thinking about how you're going to grow and scale your business, right? I mean, if you think of companies like you know, I know I'm talking about big companies, but if you think of a company like Tesla, uh, Tesla, uh, interestingly, I mean, didn't exist uh, um, until 2003 or mm. there um, about, right? And Tesla really came into an environment that was dominated by the big car manufacturers uh, and the, the, the thought of having an electric car uh, becoming predominant in the market was something that was unheard of. Uh, and at the height of uh, Tesla towards the end of last year, early this year, when their market cap uh, reached a uh, trillion dollars, uh, Tesla didn't even own, you know, 3% market share. Uh, but if you just look at the market cap, you see how much uh, the market appreciates innovation. And, and quite frankly, uh, uh, Tesla has been a catalyst for the other car manufacturers to, to start thinking seriously about electric cars. Now, every... Virtually every manufacturer has got an, um, uh, has got an electric car uh, offering. So the ability to really, you know, transform uh, an industry, the ability to disrupt an industry is based on the premises of technology. But I just want to bring it back again, Aki, to the, uh, the, the important topic of SMEs. Before we even talk about innovation, you know, we need SMEs to run their businesses in, in the most efficient and the most effective manner uh, and get the basic processes of running a business right. So digitization in particular allows for uh, automation of time-intensive time and quite frankly, labor-intensive processes, you know, freeing up, you know, uh, uh, companies and SMEs to focus on innovation. So you can't focus on innovation if you are not running your business as efficient as you possibly can. Yeah, that, that's a very good point you make there because what technology does and innovation does is unlocks that incredible value. It allows you as a company to focus on the important things of growing your business. Now, we have heard of mm. you know, many phrases, and I touched on it earlier, this democratization of technology. Technology has definitely mm. leveled the playing fields. So how can technology mm. empower these SMEs to compete against the big guys, the big rivals out there? Yeah, I think for me, you know, this one is pretty straightforward. Uh, the big companies and the rivals that we're talking about have been leveraging technology for as long as I can think. Uh, and really, the key thing is that uh, big, big companies, of course, have resources and they can afford these pieces of technology that we're talking about. But the point I want to make here is that, you know, some of the innovations and the growth that we've seen uh, in these big companies has been as a result of these technology uh, investments. If you look at the likes of, uh, you know, the big telcos uh, in, in Africa uh, and just what they've done with the fintech space, yeah. Uh, it really shows you that technology plays uh, a huge role. But then to address the question around, you know, uh, the cost of uh, technology investments and the complexity behind them, I think the advent of uh, cloud uh, has really leveled the playing field, so to speak, uh, and took away, I guess, these high uh, barriers to entry uh, around the investment that's required. So uh, for me, if you can prioritize innovation as much as you prioritize uh, growing and scaling the business, then the question of technology is, is almost a natural one because yeah. you have to think about how you're going to drive that uh, innovation.
you know, Dumisani, you've put a very compelling argument forward about, you know, SMEs and technology. You just cannot ignore uh, the innovation. Um, and and you, you've, you've laid out those points so well. And uh, it, it's really great to chat to you. But, you know, the reality is that we've come out of a very challenging time with COVID-19 uh, still around us. But I guess and I hope that we are past the, the worst of it. But it has obliterated many businesses the lockdowns have had a, a real negative effect on many businesses. So how can technology help these SMEs navigate disruptions such as these that we saw over the last two years and perhaps more disruptions that we might see in the years to come? I think there's no doubt, Aki, that, you know, uh, the, the disruption that came with COVID uh, has certainly fast-tracked the whole notion of digital transformation. But more importantly, I think uh, that disruption highlighted some pertinent areas that businesses needed to focus on to ensure that their operations were as, as, as resilient as they possible could, uh, possibly could be, uh, as well as that their business operations can continue to exist uh, in those times of uh, uh, challenges in the marketplace. So an important area for me is really um, firstly, how do you ensure that your business is resilient? And secondly, how do you ensure business continuity? But another priority is making sure that when this disruption comes, and it does come, you know, how do you quickly pivot your business model uh, to put yourself in a position where you can leverage some of the opportunities that come with a disrupt uh, a disruptive type uh, environment. So it's true uh, for me that every opportunity really, uh, sorry, every challenge presents an opportunity. So the question of uh, resiliency, business continuity needs to be balanced with agility, uh, the ability to adapt and the ability to quickly pivot. So those are some of the, I guess, the key questions that uh, COVID forced a lot of companies to really go back to the drawing board and think about uh, how do we make sure that, for example, the skills that we need to run our business uh, in a lockdown type environment uh, are still accessible? Uh, how do we make sure that those people that uh, are doing this work for us are then able to function as if they were in an office environment? So it's not so much about technology enabling uh, a working model or a working style, but it's really about how technology enables a business model and an approach to dealing with disruption. So in short, you know, uh, those businesses that were able to quickly adapt, you know, were able to thrive uh, during COVID. Uh, there are many challenges that are coming down uh, the line, uh, as you say, uh, from the cost of fuel to, you know, high inflation rates to high interest rates. But then what are the opportunities that sit behind those challenges and how do SMEs ensure that they continue to exist, but more importantly, that they thrive during these moments of uh, turmoil. Uh, so for me, I believe technology holds the answer to many of those, of those questions. And of course, unlocking that tremendous value that technology does. Uh, Dumisani Moyo, Marketing Director for Africa at SAP. Always good to chat to you. Incredibly inspiring. Thank you for your time. And uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting to watch these businesses uh, on the continent over the next few decades. Thank you for your time, Dumisani. Awesome, Maki. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, of course, uh, the world has opened up again now. And uh, you and I will surely bump into each other because there's a lot of uh, in-person uh, activities and events that are happening, but always appreciate your time and always enjoy chatting to you. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I think a trip to Waldorf, the SAP headquarters is in order. <laughs> Absolutely. I'll <laughs> be in touch. You, <laughs>